topic that I have been assigned to speak on is building the economy of states, challenge of developing inclusive and sustainable growth. Well, at a time like this, of unprecedented shocks to our national economy, oil price shock, political shocks, I might add, the way the global economy is going, I don't think there is a better topic to focus on at this point in time, and I want to thank the organizers of this forum for this focus. But I guess this is a moment to say the truth, and nothing but the truth. I hope so. Eh? Let me say at the outset, Despite all the odds and all the challenges that Nigeria is passing today, I want to premise whatever I'm going to say today, that in spite of all the challenges, I still see hope. I still see greatness that awaits Nigeria in the future. I want also to say that I believe that the collapse in oil prices is a blessing and an opportunity for Nigeria for a new beginning. And this is predicated on the fact that I believe that the trajectory that we had gone through before was not a sustainable path. And therefore, with the collapse of oil prices, it's a clarion call for us to press the reset button and start afresh on a more sustainable path. So I see that as a blessing. We are dealing with twin shocks. It's not just an oil price shock. It's not just an economic shock. It is also a political shock. And how we respond to these twin shocks will depend on how we interpret the shocks. If we think that the shocks are temporary and therefore it's only a question of a couple of months, one or two years, we'll return back to normal, then the response to it will be that of a coping strategy. We will go to short-term demand management, you know, tinker at the margins here and there in the hope that sooner or later we get back to normal, oil prices will return and we go back to life as usual. But if you believe that the shocks we are facing through are permanent shocks, that they are here with us for the next couple of years, even decades, then it calls for a totally different kind of response. And I would dare to say, we are either then in facing the reality or we are in denial. Growth in Nigeria and the states will not be inclusive if we don't break the dynasties of poverty and maximize the state's comparative and competitive advantages. It will not be inclusive if we don't break the dynasties of poverty and maximize the states and Nigeria's comparative and competitive advantages. Second is that it is not going to be sustainable if Nigeria is not secured and politically sustainable. It will not be sustainable if we don't deal with the demographics and the environment, as well as losing the stranglehold of Abuja on the states. But let me say a word or two about this. Maximizing the comparative advantages of the states and that of Nigeria, that is the easier part. Much of the APC states happen to be in the north. One fundamental part of our economy is that there is special and individual concentration of wealth and poverty. Much of the northern states, what you call the frontline states, 11 of them, 
are in deep poverty. That is also coincidentally the states with the highest rate of population growth. Those happen also to be the states with the, where you have desertification that is encroaching massively. Productivity level of agriculture in those states is down by about 20%. What is the implication of this if you are talking about an inclusive and sustainable growth? What it does for tells us is that unless we deal with the demographics, unless we can deal with the, that of geography, and more importantly, how do you empower the people to get out of, to be able to participate in the growth process? How do you give the people the capacity to participate in the growth process? And I want to argue that as we are today, growth is supposed to be a long-term phenomenon. You cannot have an inclusive growth unless you design an educational system that breaks out the dynasties of poverty today. And therefore, my focus in this lecture is what I call a fragile state with a failing economy, making progressive change work for Nigeria. I thought this is important because being the first lecture since the inauguration of APC government, it is important to focus on the broader issues rather than the specific, and so on, writing the memorandum. My focus, ladies and gentlemen, will be on what I call the meta-level architecture. The meta-level architecture because no state can develop sustainably if the overall governance and the economy are in crisis.